eight persons die of yellow fever in Ganjuma local government area of Bauchi State. Nigeria Center for Disease Control confirms 94 new cases of coronavirus infections. In international news, U.S. President Trump mounts multiple legal challenges to election results in battleground states as President-elect Biden begins tackling COVID-19 pandemic. And in sport, NPFL new season resumes December the 6th. This is ANN News. I am Olajuwake Olatunji. Bauchi State's Primary Health Care Development Agency has confirmed an outbreak of yellow fever has claimed eight lives in Ganjua local government area of Bauchi State. Agency Chairman Dr. Rewanu Mohammed says the polio team was in some communities for routine exercise when it found out eight persons had died of the virus of the disease rather. Mohammed says eight samples were brought for Lassa fever and yellow fever tests and all samples tested positive for yellow fever. He says the agency will begin an immediate vaccination exercise against the deadly disease. Nigeria Center for Disease Control has confirmed an additional 94 new COVID-19 cases in the country on Monday. The agency says only 2,752 COVID-19 patients are currently being treated, treated in various isolation centers across the country. The new confirmed figures were in seven states, of which Lagos recorded 50 cases, FCT 24, Paras 9, Edo 4, and Kaduna 3. Bondo and Plateau each had two new cases, and CDC reminded Nigerians of the importance of continued hand washing and wearing of masks to reduce the spread of the virus. Many economic sectors globally, including in Nigeria, have counted their losses from the first wave of the coronavirus while also preparing for the second wave. The alien Nigerian aviation sector is receiving a federal government largess of 5 billion naira as bailout funds for the sector. This government says its intention is to ameliorate the harsh realities of the COVID-19 pandemic on their business operations. Respondents, the departments has the details. It had always been a question of the size of the bailout and not if the federal government would provide funding support for the Nigerian aviation industry. The question has now been answered by the country's aviation minister. The federal government has provided $4 billion for airlines and $1 billion for other businesses within the civil aviation. We are putting criteria for the disbursement of those funds. And uh, once it is done, it will be transparently done and they will be so disbursed. The disbursement of the funds is expected to begin in the coming days. It will come as a relief for an industry that was already facing serious funding challenges even before the COVID-19 pandemic hit. But some experts say the process needs to be reviewed to ensure only deserving airlines get funds. The same minister that announced the $5 billion for the airline said that the airline are owing $19 billion and six million dollars 19 billion naira and six million dollars so the question i ask is what is the wisdom in giving them money when they are owing so if there are people that are not owing among the airline it's okay they could be entitled to the bailout but if there are people if there are airlines if there are airlines that are owing they should not be entitled to any cover of that five billion this is not the first time that the government is offering bailouts to the aviation industry. Hefty bailouts by the government between 2009 and 2012 failed to turn the industry around. That led to accusations that some airlines simply misused the funds. In 2012, they collected over 200 billion. The question is, what did they do with it? What did they, those who collected the 200 billion, what did they do? How many of them have returned? It's not clear if the latest bailout will make any difference. But one thing is certain. The Nigerian aviation industry is in a bad shape. The situation worsened by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
all airlines have been forced to lay off staff and have also slashed salaries. Most of them are deep in debt. The aircraft that flies, the onboard service, the airport that receives, and the parts aircraft, the engineers, the pilots, the entire value chain of aviation has been tremendously affected. If we're going to talk in, in, in figures, I mean, we've been talking about figures in the past. It's, 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 it's tons and billions of dollar loss. The $13 million bailout fund is certainly low compared to what some aviation experts have said is needed to turn the sector around. But at this time, just anything the industry can lay its hands on will go some way to help address some of the challenges bedeviling an industry that needs every and any help it can get at the moment. The Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors has charged that a transmission company of Nigeria has made no significant improvements in the energy it generated to the distribution company's discos in five years. And yet, the umbrella body of discos discussed this in its latest quarterly performance report in which it says the volume of energy received by the discos since 2015 has remained low and flat and it further says the historical projections of the multi-year tariff order model has remained inconsistent with the energy assumptions of the tariff model and it says the discos uncertainty on the energy to be received from the tcn had become a major threat that will affect their performance improvement plans Coming up, African stories. U.S. election creates uncertainty for South Africa-U.S. trade relations. And later, international news. U.S. President Trump mounts multiple legal challenges to election results in battleground states as President-elect Biden begins tackling COVID-19 pandemic. watching Welcome back. This is AN News. The Egyptian government has reinstated strict um, anti coronavirus measures as COVID 19 surge. Prime Minister Mustafa Madubo has blamed the rise in cases on the citizens and lack of adherence to precautionary measures. Respondent Yuzer Hakim reports. Officials fear this could be the start of a second wave of coronavirus infections that could be more devastating than the earlier one. Many Egyptians have relaxed observing precautionary measures, leading infections to double last week's figures. At 200 infections a day, the number of cases is still much lower than the peak levels of 1,200 per day recorded in June. Health officials hope a strong emphasis on observing health regulations will help save many lives. When the lockdown and curfews were lifted a couple of months ago, people thought that things were fine and disregarded personal health measures as if the coronavirus doesn't exist anymore. I used the underground metro. I always hear health awareness messages broadcast on speakers in all stations, but no one is listening and most of the passengers are not wearing masks. The government's response this week has been to increase fines on individuals who don't abide by the outlined health regulations. Restaurants, hotels and other service providers will be closed down immediately if they break the safety rules such as social distancing, wearing masks and operating at 50% capacity. But what has really caused an uproar for businesses is the plan announced by the cabinet spokesman to permanently close all facilities like shops, restaurants, cafes and malls, three or four hours earlier than usual. It will affect us badly. If they allow us to close at midnight, it would be okay, but not 10 p.m. 
the workers will suffer the most, not just the owner. Egyptians prefer to go out at night and stay out late. This is the best time for our work. We could lose more than 40% of our income if we close early. I will have to reduce the number of workers here. Some experts believe closing these facilities early is a wise move, even well after the COVID-19 pandemic. It's not just because of the coronavirus. Closing early sustains social and economic stability. It means less environmental pollution, less energy and electricity consumption, and better traffic. It facilitates the mission of the police to maintain security and safety at night. It also allows authorities to clean the cities after shops close. In its meeting, the government has shied away from closing schools, as anticipated, but warned of a new lockdown if the numbers of infections keeps rising. For the past four years of the Trump administration, many African countries have experienced negative economic impact as the U.S. policies isolated many of the nations. Now that President-elect Joe Biden is poised to take the reins of government in January, South Africa, along with other African countries, is uncertain of what form its trade relations with the U.S. would take. Respondent Sumitra Undu reports. Under the Trump administration, some of the benefits of AGOA were offset by a 25% global steel and aluminium tariff. The U.S. also played hardball, insisting on increased exports of U.S. chicken to South Africa. We needed to allow 65,000 tons of poultry meat to be exported to South Africa. The local poultry industry um, was against that because at the time we had an anti-dumping duty for poultry against um, the U.S. of 9 Rand 30. Um, it's a specific duty and it was obtained um, within the rules of the WTO. So what the uh, GOA um, quoted did was really to allow imports from the U.S. to come into South Africa, excluding the anti-dumping duty. The trade war with China has also made it hard for African countries to prioritize beneficial trade deals. We know that China has been a challenge to the U.S with regard to overtaking it as the largest economy. And President Barack Obama and, and those before him have been fighting this. But what President Trump just did, he came out and almost made it clear to the rest of the world that you are either China's friend and you are my enemy or the other way around. But there's been moves in Africa to limit dependency on trade with the U.S. and other Western countries. The African continental free trade area will become the largest trading bloc in the world if implemented correctly. Life after a war means intensifying the African free trade agreement so that there are not as many divisions among African states. So that when the U.S. tries to negotiate with one country, it gets forced to negotiate with the African Union. Rather. There is, I think, a need for countries to be pursuing at the national level their own trade and development agenda and that's where bilateral trade agreements come in place. Now if we look at the African um, continental free trade agreement as a block as opposed to countries um, having these bilateral trade agreements. Whichever way the selection goes, there's still no guarantee that a GOA will be renewed for a third decade. The duty-free agreement came into play during the Bush era and is set to expire in 2025. When we return, international news. U.S. President Trump mounts multiple legal challenges to election results and battleground states as President-elect Biden begins tackling COVID-19 pandemic. And later, sport. NPFL new season resumes December. Watching ANN. Somewhere in the world, every second of the day, news is happening. And of course, Nigeria is bustling with news day and night. That is why ANN doesn't sleep. Our eyes are peeled, wide open, so no story escapes our radar. 
We stay abreast of world events and happenings at home. We keep you up to the minute in the world of sports. We give you information to stay on top of your investments and all the hard facts you need to navigate your day. If you miss us on air, you can keep up to date on our website and on our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at ANN Africa TV. We are ANN African News Network. We do news right in a truly African spirit. Welcome back. This is ANN News. U.S. President Donald Trump has continued his argument that he's being cheated out of the just completed election. He has refused to concede and has decided to open legal challenges in all the battleground states where he lost to President-elect Joe Biden. Many legal analysts, including some Republicans, have said the lawsuits have no basis and have produced no evidence to back up the president's claims of massive fraud. Meanwhile, President-elect Biden has swung into action by naming a 12-person coronavirus task force, making clear his urgent task is to find the means to win in the raging pandemic in the country. He has appealed to Americans to wear masks as the nation passed the bleak total of 10 million infections that have made it the world's worst hit country. As I said on Saturday, I'm humbled by the trust and confidence the American people have placed in me and Vice President-elect Harris. And we're ready to get to work addressing the needs of the American people. Today, that work begins. It starts with doing everything possible to get the COVID-19 under control. And we just received positive news in this fight with the announcement that there's been progress made toward a successful vaccine. As we work toward a safe and effective vaccine, we know the single most effective thing we can do to stop the spread of COVID is wear a mask. The head of the CDC warned this fall that for the foreseeable future, a mask remains the most potent weapon against the virus. Today's news does not change that urgent reality. I won't be president until January 20th, but my message today is to everyone is this. It doesn't matter who you voted for, whether you stood, who, where you stood before Election Day. It doesn't matter your party, your point of view. You can save tens of thousands of lives if everyone would just wear a mask for the next few months. So please, I implore you, wear a mask. In a bid to combat the spread of the coronavirus pandemic, Portugal is using all avenues available to ensure its citizens are tested. A bus converted mobile lab has now been deployed for COVID-19 testing. Hop on the COVID bus and prepare to get tested. For many, like Alexandra, who has asthma, this is the most convenient and safe way to find out if they have coronavirus antibodies. Since I work with people in risk groups and I myself belong in the risk group, I think it's important that everyone gets tested. I think this is excellent. Our city is two steps ahead of the rest of the country. This bus turned mobile lab was created by the Portuguese city of Cascais to study how many people have been in contact with the virus. The test is free for residents. We've been going to poorer neighborhoods, to people with low mobility. We also tested teachers in the beginning of the school year, and now the bus has been complementing the hospitals by providing the flu shot for free. For many, this has been a light in the middle of the pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic has shut down many normal activities around the world, especially in sport. Puerto Rico wrestling enthusiasts in Mexico have been deprived of their pleasures until now. The entertainment show has returned in a Mexico City drive-in. The masks, the theatrics, the outrageous costumes. Lucha Libre is back. 
After a seven-month hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Mexico's favourite theatrical event is once again playing to audiences in what have come to be known as auto luchas or drive-in wrestling shows. We've come to this show four times. We love it because as well as being a Mexican sport, it's good for the kids to be able to drain their frustrations. We hadn't been out in a long time, and to be able to come to an event like this is great. Although the venue is different, it seems to make no difference to the crowd's fury as they boo the rudo or bad guys and cheer on their favourites, the Tecnicos. And for the wrestlers themselves, their return is lifting their spirits. It was seven long months away from the ring. It was a long time for us, an eternity. So we're happy and so grateful to the people who come out to watch us. For us, there are no big or small venues. Wherever we perform, we give it our all. This event has sprung out of the necessity created by the pandemic, but Dorian Roldan, the wrestling company's director, says he foresees a bright future for auto luchas. This innovation here is something that may become a regular event, even outside these times of pandemic crisis. Our television partners say that it makes for very good programming, so a full season of shows in the future will be a very interesting project. As pandemic protocols change the face of live entertainment, for Lucha Libre's performers and spectators, it's a vital steam valve to relieve the tension amid an uncertain future. Up next, sport. NPFL new season resumes December the 6th. Please stay with us. watching ANN. Whether in your house, at your office, on your phone or online, we are there. We have the fact behind the headlines. We cut to the chase with the news you really need. We cover every angle. We are the bigger, better news network. We are African News Network. ANN. Watch ANN News on MITV from a truly African spirit. We are on the road every day, canvassing throughout Africa for news you really need. We follow this story everywhere, from every corner of Nigeria to the wide African expanse. We bring you what's making headlines, we connect you with news you can use. ANN, African News Network, in a truly African spirit. Welcome back. This is ANN News. In sports, the 2020-2021 Nigeria Professional Football League will kick off in early December. The biggest opening day fixture will see CAF Confederations Cup container, Rivers United hosting Enugu Rangers. Another fixture for which to look out is the Aqua Ibom Derby between Aqua United and Dakada FC. The league is expected to end in July next year. Nigeria Football Federation President Amadou Penik has confirmed he will contest for a seat at the FIFA Council at the next elective Congress of the Confederation of African Football scheduled for March next year. Penik says he arrived at a final decision after several consultations. If he wins, he would become the third Nigerian after Oyo, Orok Oyo, 1980 to 1988, and Amos Adamu, 2006 to 2010, to be elected into the council. That is in the news this evening. Thank you for joining us for details on these and other breaking stories. Visit our website, annafrica.news. Conversation continues on our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at ANN Africa TV. I am Olajumoke Olatiji. Have a pleasant evening.